are we running this race against? I was reading this morning in Isaiah chapter 2, and it's throughout the whole Bible. You're, you're very aware of that. But I was thinking to myself, reading about how um, Israel and Judah um, seem to be so foolish that they turn their back on God, they start worshiping idols, carving things out of wood and stone and, and bowing down and worshiping, thinking that that marble statue is going to save them and help them and, and bless them. And I found myself thinking, my, how can they do that? I mean, they've saw the hand of God in their life. They saw how God has delivered them over and over and provided for them. And the sweet Holy Spirit convicted me that aren't I the same? And yes, I am. And I asked that he would change me each and every day. I need changed every day, every moment that the old Cindy dies even more. And that I allow the Holy Spirit to have more leeway in my life. But see, every one of us, we have to examine ourselves. The Word of God tells us that we are in this race. You can read in 2 Corinthians, no, it's 1 Corinthians um, 9, 24 through 27, about the Christian race. Um keeping our body, our desires, um, bringing them under subjection by the power of the Holy Spirit, crying out to Jesus. We can't do this on our own, but he expects us to want our will to no longer be and align with his. So who are we running this race against? When we stand before Jesus Christ, it is not going to be our brother and sister next to us as to who Jesus was comparing us to. So see, if you're looking at Sally and Sally just, you know, doesn't hardly read the Bible, you know she doesn't really pray, you know, I mean, and you're going, well, I do better than that. Guys, that is dangerous. We can't do that. We cannot compare ourselves to our brothers and sisters. We will fail. See, when we each stand before Jesus Christ, it will be the word of God that we will be judged with, against. Do you remember the parable of the talents? I love it. A talent, yes, it is like a gift. Things that... um. That, that Jesus has given us. It's in Matthew 25, right after the parable of the ten virgins. But if you read that, Jesus is talking about, he's giving another example of the kingdom of heaven. is like a man who travels into a far country. But see, he leaves with his, um, with his servants, one, ten talents, another five, and another one. And he expects them to, to do something with this while he's gone. And that is portraying Jesus being away right now for us. And we're waiting for him to return at any moment. Well, if you read the parable of the talents, what happens is the one with the... And before I go on, I do want to point this out. It says, um, and he gave the, the talents to them to every man according to his several ability and straightway took his journey. So see, Jesus, when he gives each one of us, we don't have an excuse to not use the gifts and the talents that he has given us, especially to witness for him. But anyway, here Jesus gives them these talents to do while he is gone. And the one with the ten talents he doubled it. The one with the five talents, he doubled it. But the one with the one talent, he says, it says right here in verse 25, that he was afraid and went and hid his talent. And 
when the Lord, the king returns, he is very upset and angry. And this unprofitable servant, that's what the king calls him, is cast into outer darkness. In other words, hell, where there is weeping and gnashing of teeth. Okay, I'm saying all this to say we are in this race and we cannot be comparing it to each other. We have got to look fast upon Jesus, the Word of God, line ourselves up with the Word, and obey it. We will regret it one day if we don't. Even doing a video on Facebook, if I am doing this to see how many likes I get, how many shares I get, that will be a downfall. Because, see, I have to be doing this out of obedience to the Lord. Because, see, when I stand before Jesus Christ, he is not going to look and say, oh, good for you, Cindy, you got 200 likes on that and three shares. He isn't going to do that. It's going to be whether or not I proclaim the word of God. If I used every avenue I could, that means at the store. That means if you are a pastor, I used to have a pastor years ago that was, he at one time preached truth across the pulpit. But yet even then, when he was not behind the pulpit, he was talking everything worldly. You could not even get him to talk about anything spiritual. It just, it was like his time behind the pulpit was when he was spiritual. Now just let him live his life. That, he isn't even preaching anymore. But see, and, and that that's sad. But see, what I'm saying is that was a red flag. Are we living it? Are we afraid? Are we hiding our talent? Are we not willing to open up our mouth and share about Jesus Christ? We will regret it because we are being examined, watched by the Holy Spirit every moment of every day. We need to run this race to finish to the glory of Jesus Christ for him to be exalted and glorified. You know, when I started this off and was talking about um, the idols that Judah and Israel were bowing down to, <clears throat> and we do the same thing. These are the things that can hinder us in this race. I'm going to speak for myself. And if it bears witness with you, may the Lord use it. But thank the Lord. It's been many years ago, but still, I was a born-again believer doing this. I would sit and I would watch sitcoms. Now, they'd be what we would call family, but they would be lying. There would be fornication, laughed about. There would be adultery, um, stealing. You name it. This kind of behavior was going on. And the precious Holy Spirit would convict me and say, you're partaking of that. And I'd think, how can I be? I'm just watching. I'm not, you know, I'm not doing those things. But see, the Word of God tells us that we cannot be partakers having fellowship with unrighteousness. We cannot sit at the table with devils and also with Jesus. It does not work that way. That is in 2 Corinthians 6.14. The word tells us that we have to come out from among them and be separate. See, if we don't, we are going to be um, hindered in our race. And we will not finish well. And the sad thing is, the enemy is out for keep. So if he can keep us from crossing that finish line, that's what his plan is. But 
watching TV and and partaking in that kind of sin is just one thing. You might have something that the Holy Spirit will convict you of, but we've got to listen to that and obey and then draw out of it. We've got to be more separate. That is what the Lord is calling us for. We've got to, guys, or we will not be able to hold on. We will be too in encumbered by the things of this world. I'm going to be honest. Now, thank the Lord, ever since I've been saved, I haven't done these. But I know ones that do. Horoscopes. Um, reading and, and trusting that, oh, and th that's superstition. It is mixing with devils. We cannot do that. What about these magical movies, things like that, that open ourselves and our children up to demon spirits? And we just sit there and we say, hey, now you're just getting a little bit too dogmatic here. Jesus understands. Besides, how many times have we said this to ourselves and shame on us? But besides, I deserve some me time. When I am just able to kick back and watch TV and just forget about the cares, that's my time. No, that is not in the Bible. Not in the Bible at all. We no longer live to ourselves. Our desires are supposed to be to the Father. We will have our pleasure time when we get to heaven with Jesus Christ. Right now, guess what? We're soldiers. We're supposed to be mounted up in this in this um, army, in this war, or we won't make it. I'm talking about running the race. And if we're comparing ourselves to others, we won't make it. We have got to cut loose the things that are hindering us and be drawn more out of this world. We cannot have fellowship with the things of darkness. Jesus tells us to be separate. Second Corinthians 7, 1 Corinthians 7.1 Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Well, one thing, the fear of God, no one wants to even have it anymore and the fear of God keeps us from sin when we know that we better pray God's grace and mercy on us every day when we have the fear of God it is a precious thing but it is just being trivialized anymore but we have got to run this race to win to cross the finish line. And I trust that the Holy Spirit will convict of whatever it might be in your life, just like he has in mine and will continue to in my life. Whether it's the way that we dress, whether it is just things we are doing throughout our day that, that we feel his prompting, I, I need you to not do that no more, child. We need to obey. It, it isn't a trivial thing. It's those who do the will of the Father, guys, that inherit the kingdom of God. Obeying His will is everything. Who are we running this race against? It's ourselves. And we're going to be judged by the word of God. So don't look to the left or to the right. Don't measure yourself by another brother or sister in the Lord. Don't hide your talent. What God has given you to do, open your mouth and say it. Don't hide. Don't be afraid. We've already read what happens to the unprofitable servant that did that. He doesn't make it.
Let's run this race to win, all to the glory of Jesus. Father, I thank you that, Lord, we cannot even understand the Word of God without your precious Holy Spirit guiding and directing us and showing us truth. Lord, do that to each and every one of us, everyone that will be watching this. Open our ears and hearts. Give us a, an obedient spirit that would want to obey you above taking our very next breath. And Father, burden our hearts with souls that, Lord, we would be obedient and preach your word. That when either at, at the store, at work, wherever, Father, that we would see the souls around us and that we would give them the glorious news of Jesus Christ. That they would repent of their sin and come to know you as their Lord and Savior. For Father, we know that time is short. You are raising up people in all areas of this world shouting and proclaiming that you're coming soon. Make us ready. Help us to be ready, Father. Bless each and every one that's watching. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you.